Hello Broadway fans and stands, and welcome back and today we have a very serious topic and that is talking about the Jagged Little Pill controversy. To give you a brief summary, basically Lauren Patton, or Lauren Patton, whatever her name is, um, basically um, the character that she plays Joe, which she just won a Tony for, um, was critically acclaimed when it came into Boston and at the AOT. However, Joe had certain lines that made the character seem like Joe is either non-binary, or transgender, or should be played by a person that goes by they, them pronouns. Um, and we obviously learned from Lauren's video, they kind of made the character um, ambiguous. You guys know what I mean, it's, it's that word. I, I can't pronounce things, I'm, I'm an idiot. But, essentially, um, I'm just gonna get to the point of that. It, it, it's clunky writing, it's insensitive, and I mean, come on. As much as I, I think Diablo Cody is a good writer, when you have a white woman that is not that is openly a straight person that is goes by a female that all these things and they're going to tackle issues of race um uh non-binary choice of course there's gonna be mistakes that's why you gotta have non-binary people the people that are actually in those stories being written about you can't have a white woman doing that you can but it's just they're, they're gonna make some mistake it's bound to happen my motto always is, is a white, a white guy can tell a black person's story well, but a black person can tell a black person's story amazingly. And I think that that is true for everything from gender to this and that. It's, it's just, yeah, it works better when the person, the, the character that's on stage, the story is written by someone that has that lived experience and all that stuff. A lot of people connected with the character. Um, Lauren even said that uh, Joe goes by they, them pronouns, I think. There were certain lines that definitely suggested that Joe was not just um, a lesbian that went by, that was uh, a female. And essentially, Lauren said that she wanted this character to be for something for everyone, but she now realizes how um, very dangerous that was and how, um, at the end of the day, I, I personally believe that the creative team didn't think of Joe as a non-binary person or a transgender person. I simply think they had clunky writing and were being very insensitive and I don't think they even knew what Joe was. They were trying to take experiences from transgender people, non-binary people, gay people, then just make a combination, but that just doesn't work. And it also is fishy that the understudy, who I think is Iris now, um, that Iris essentially was the understudy, but yes, they essentially used Iris's stories and experiences, and that's what basically what Iris and Nora um, showed in their posts, is that the creative team used them and they felt like props, which is something you don't want. Now, they intentionally, probably, maybe at some points, unintentionally, that's probably what the bulk of it was, but they were just trying to get their experiences to put in those lead characters, but at the same time, this opens up the conversation of how, you know, non-binary, transgender, I mean, these more, these, these, the, the, the real diversity, and the real, the real diversity, not diversity with the capital, with the lowercase d, but with the real d, is not something that people want to go to, because it will scare off investors and producers who are rich white men who might have a couple bit of biases on this. Um, it's just fact. But I do believe that they were using stuff, and they created this character that they had made. A, they made a situation where people saw the character a certain way. Yes, they wanted to change it, but a lot of people felt seen in this part. And them changing it so they wouldn't get a controversy, created a controversy. Now, why didn't they fire Lauren? Because Lauren was going to win them their Tony. And what happened on Sunday is what happened on Sunday. It's like if you took Ben Platt out of Evan Hansen. That's stupid to do. Lauren is a, brings down a, is a, has a show-stopping number that, that makes the audience go crazy. She won a Tony for it, and they didn't want to let him go. But I think they had to consider that they were telling a show that was much about social justice, and in doing social justice, sometimes giving up the award and giving up the prestige is more important, um, and, and is less important than telling the story with its morals and making sure the right people are playing the right parts. But it's become very toxic and negative around Lauren Patton and the creative team and people being very upset with them. Now, in my personal opinion, I definitely do think that they you can change characters and I think that's very reasonable. You can change somebody. But when it's something at this significant level and you see that people are, you may have hurt people, you gotta, you gotta have responsibility and do it. I think Lauren should have left the show. Even even if they never really meant her to be non-binary, which I find highly, highly sketchy because you have Iris and Nora both coming out with stories, cast members leaving like Derek uh, McLean, no, not Derek McLean, Antonio uh, Carbonaro, um, uh, 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 Celia, Good Gooding, Celia Gooding, um, and I think someone, oh, did someone else leave? 
I think those were the two core lead members to leave. So for them to leave shows that they know something that they that we don't know. So there are some people that are saying, oh, well, they can change it. And people are making controversy out of nothing and the far left. And I kind of sort of maybe thought that might have been true. <clears throat> but the fact that lead cast members are leaving. This lead cast members don't leave shows because the show did something. Like, this has never happened before. Ever. Like, this is the first time... In, probably not in Broadway history, but in the past, like, 10 years that this level of controversy has happened. And that people, two leads, who were not, one who was nominated for a Tony, left because they felt that it was, they had harmed the community. Which shows that, hey, guess what? Jagged Little Pill did hurt the trans community, and they are in the wrong. Um, and for a while, I thought maybe they were in the middle, maybe they were in the good zone, but no, they're in the wrong. You know, when cast members are actively speaking out about their experiences, and those are the ones that are in the room that know it, that the situation as well as any person would. And I choose to believe them. And I think Jagged Little Pill should have fired, not fired Lauren, Lauren should have stepped down when this happened back in May of, of 2020, uh, of 2021. And listen, it, Lauren, I, I don't think it was worth the Tony. I mean, she wanted the Tony, and she wanted a send-off, and the character was important to her, but the, the level of toxicity and negativity that she has gotten and now will continue to get was, I don't think, worth it at all. I think that Lauren is going to face a lot of backlash and a lot of hate, and I don't even think she'll get another Tony because I think that, you know, the trans and non-binary community are going to be the power players soon, probably, and they're not going to like Lauren Patton or Antonio or... Tootsie or Mrs. Doubtfire, and they're going to remember those people. And for her long term career, this was not worth it. And I think, again, even if she felt like she was in the right, or there's some, and there's two sides to every story, even, even if she felt like, oh, I don't deserve to leave, she should have just left. Because she is supposed to, she, she, she presents herself as an ally, and an ally needs to listen and observe. And eventually come to the conclusion that I need to leave. And I think that the show is already embroiled in so much controversy that I wouldn't want to be any part of it. And Lauren's got so many other big projects going on, there's no point for her to return to this part. Um, but obviously, Tony Awards and the prestige of that can get in the way. Um, and it is ironic how much the songs and some of the specific lyrics mirror what's actually happening in this situation. Um, and there's a controversy of... Um, Celia Gooding's character, um, whose um, name I'm forgetting, I don't know why, um, that non-binary people are cheaters, which is a stereotype I didn't even know about, but guess what? Cis privilege, you know? It's like, it's again, like, I, I would never write a story about non-binary trans people. I would, I would produce it, I, if I was in a position of power, I would get actual people to, who were part of the trans and non-binary community, the LGBTQ plus community, to, to write and direct it, because they are the ones that are going to make the least amount of mess-ups. And if I were to direct one, I would have someone with me who would be constantly on my back. But that's not what's happening. Um, and then obviously Norris said that she couldn't get surgery, um, and she was mistreated, and she was fainting, and stage management treated her so poorly, and Equity launched their own investigation as a jagged little pill. That was a terrible story. I hate to say this, but stage managers, dressers, lighting designers, great people, but they're the real issues, in my opinion. Uh, uh, Dime, uh, uh, someone from Dear Hansen who played Alana, I think it was, D uh, and, uh, Essence Diamond, or Diamond, I don't know, I forget her name, but she said that, P the costume chain, the costume people, the hair people were telling her to make her hair more exotic for Alana and more straight and white for um, Zoe. And again, I hate to say it, but the light, the people that are on the ground every day are the real problems. The creative team make mistakes, but they I don't think that they're the core issue. It's the stage managers, the lighting designers, the sound people. I mean, those people need to be vetted more. And you just got to do a better job. And the fact that it was the vice president of equity, it's like, oh my God, they, they've had to uh, uh, issue so many apologies. Now, the creative team wasn't in the wrong. It was just the stage management. And then Iris also said that, you know, um... I was still get some, you know, uh, PTSD from Jagged Little Pill. And I've been in productions where have been terrible experiences. So I get that. I, I, I can relate to that. So not only do they have the Lauren controversy, and then she won the Tony, and the tw TikTok, Twitter exploded. So now you have the Lauren controversy, and now people put, wanting to protest. You have the Iris controversy, and the Nora controversy, and an investigation launched. Two separate ones. And now we get that... 
And what he makes this even worse is that um, Elizabeth Stanley, who plays Mary Jane, is getting maternity, maternity leave, and they're getting Heidi Blinkenstaff to play. And that's not a good look that you will let a black person, Nora, not get time off, but a white woman does. Obviously, I don't think race played a part in it. Maybe it did, but it's a bad look. It's a really bad look. I think Heidi Blinkenstaff will be good in Tag of the Pope, just saying. So you have all of these controversies. Also, people have problems with, with the piece itself, with the work itself. And then you have lead actors leaving the show, Lauren turning off her comments, leading the people in the cast, not even congratulating Lauren. And Lauren not even being in the, the two public performances. Like, Jagged Little Pill Man, you're pretty obviously trying to hide Lauren. Now, has this affected ticket sales? No. From a business standpoint, Jagged Little Pill is selling extremely well. Sorry to burst your bubbles, but it is selling very well. And all this controversy doesn't matter, or people don't care, or even know about it, the mainstream who go to see the shows. But I will say that big articles are covering this, whereas before it was more niche people, Instagram accounts covering it. So what should Jagged Little Pill do? I don't think that, I don't like the petition, I don't, like, I don't want to petition a show to close, because with COVID and them just getting their jobs back, I don't want to see, like, 100 plus actors and stage managers out of work and having no job. I don't like that. That feels icky to me morally. But what I will say is that what they need to do is they need to fire. They need Lori needs to step down. And the fact that they have, they're going to say, oh, non-binary people, trans people, people on a gender journey will play Joe. Like, what does that say about, like, that Joe is that? Or you were intending her to be that. It's like, Lori needs to leave. Noah, Noah and Iris should both get apologies. Maybe some financial compensations. I don't know, something. They need a higher state, new stage manager, new everything. They need to make, they, they, and this is a bigger systemat, systemic issue of stage managers, but that needs to be done as well. They need to hire a non-binary or trans or person on a gender journey, LGBTQ plus whatever person um, as Joe. And they need to move on from this. And they need to change the book and the script for some of the problematic issues. And they need to apologize. And if they did all of those things, the harm's already been done. They've dug themselves into such a big hole that I don't know if it's even fixable at this point. But what I will say is that if they did do some of those things, it would somewhat redeem them in a way. But at the end of the day, Jagged Little Pill is responsible for Jagged Little Pill's demise. They had to, they, they, they denied it, and they said, no, it's, no, we're sorry. And then the, the thing, and then people, actors are tweeting Jagged Little Pill's uh, workplace was toxic. It's like, it's just so bad. I have not seen a controversy this bad on Broadway ever. I mean, this is truly so bad. And it is historically bad. Um, and I, I don't even know what else could happen. So I don't think Jagged Little Pill will run that long on Broadway um, to begin with. Or maybe it will. And maybe the con I hope that the show is remembered for the important stuff it says more than just the controversy. And even then, people have think that Jagged Little Pill is performative and that it is kind of not taking these issues as seriously as they should. So it's very sad to see that that's happening with Broadway and Jack Little Pill. Thank you for watching. Like, sub, and comment. Um, and the uh, and I was gonna talk about other stuff on Broadway very quickly. Aladdin closed, but then it's opened back up, so that's good. Um, Diana is on is on Netflix now, not getting the best reviews. Beetlejuice tickets are now on sale, which is awesome. Um, a Strange Loop, which is a musical I'm super excited for, is coming back in. Uh, and yeah, so peace. And uh, yeah, let's. I hope this reaches people at Jagged Little Pill. And you really do some soul searching and ask yourself, was it worth it? And as the song says.